2015. Because of being so attached to life, to this kind of physical life, and uh, taking care too much of this body, clinging to it too much, and then always giving it nutrition, you know, protecting it, uh, loving it, meaning the body, yes. And then also because of, of it, because of this body, even go further to harm other beings, to protect it. And then, even then, one day, this body will be also nothing, gone. And then it becomes like earth, dirt again. Yeah. And all this time, I mean all this lifetime, he has never discarded this body in order to help anyone. He was thinking like that, some of the past lives, not the lives that he sacrificed, but probably the lives that he did not sacrifice, like in an ignorant state of being. Maybe he did not remember, maybe he did always sacrifice. But in this state, because he's a mortal again, he has no uh, memories of the past. Yeah, some people have this capacity, but the king at that time, he was just a normal practitioner, a mortal. He's just sincere and loving and kind, but he has not probably uh, got the Guaning method, the, the light and sound to for ultimate liberation. So he said that uh, he has never disregard this body in order to save anyone or help anyone. So today, I have to, I have to be more strong, courageous to sacrifice in or to to hold on to this sacrifice so that I can break out, break away all these wrong concepts and, and, and ignorance walls that surrounding me life after life. Otherwise, I would never be able to attain this uh, forever life, yeah? meaning never die state, yeah? nirvana. After that, he thought he, he, he tried all his strength to get up again and put himself on the scale again. And his face is still very tranquil and vouver, no complaining, happy, pleasant face. He tried to show that at least. And then at that time, the whole heavens and earth tremble violently again, six times. Probably it's not a physical, it's probably just in the astral level that it trembles. Because if it trembles so much, <laughs> probably the whole earth collapsed too, you know? <laughs> Six times. Yeah. It's not like an earthquake or something. Yeah? Okay. And then the, the palace, palaces in heaven is also wavering, tossed and turned in heaven. It's like moving around. <laughs> <laughs> like in, as if we have earthquake here. Yeah. Oh, probably that's a heavenly earthquake. Huh? We didn't know in heaven also have earthquakes. <laughs> yeah, when some bodhisattva suffers so much in order to search for the truth for, for himself and all beings, then it touch all heavens like that. It's so powerful. And then many heavenly beings look down and see what's going on, and they're all very moved, and they all fly down and throw a lot of flowers to offer to this bodhisattva and also crying, you know, because of this great compassionate heart and so courageous, you know, fearless. And then at that time, the chakra got in the form of the hawk also finally feel moved. Thank God. <laughs> so he changed himself into the real uh, uh, appearance, you know, as a god. And his assistant also changed into a dignified god, yeah, assistant god. And then he said to the Buddha, Praised be 
Your Majesty Bodhisattva. I, I have observed, I have witnessed that you truly have the Bodhisattva spirit. Selfless sacrifice, helping, blessing, a little less than Buddha, Bodhisattva. He has this spirit, doesn't mean he's already Bodhisattva. Maybe he is already, but not, not yet, you know, not so high. Even if the Bodhisattva is born again, also forget again. Hmm. From all this time, I only see the Buddha walk seven steps when he was born. Nobody else would. Everybody forget. Or maybe remember when we were younger, babies, until two, three, four years old. And later, have to learn all over again like everyone else. But they learn, but not learn like ordinary people then. They learn, but they absorb fast, you know, because of their concentration. For the past life merit, so they very quickly become enlightened again. Yeah, in order to help beings. It, because if he's, they start from ABC again, then who can help who? <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, all of us start from ABC again, then uh, nobody would sit here and read stories. Yeah? Okay. Then he said, I was just testing you. Well, we all know. That's your job, eh? Specialized. Always go testing and making people suffer. My God, it's like devil. What kind of God? Huh? Yeah, one of those jealous gods, you know. So if any god appears to you and says, you're a jealous god, don't worship another god beside me, then you tell him, go to, you know, <laughs> where? <laughs> you know, you know, <laughs> go play somewhere else. <laughs> I don't need a god like you. Yeah? I'm jealous myself enough, <laughs> right? I myself have enough of this bad quality. You go away from me. Yeah? Don't, 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 I say, don't uh, contaminate me with more jealousy. Uh, me and my husband already have problem enough with that. <laughs> or me and my wife, yeah? <laughs> okay. But I have one question for you. <laughs> my God, the king is already bleeding and so weak already, even losing all the flesh and the blood already, dying already. I still want to ask question. This guy is really a, an iron heart, you know. Oh, God, when will he ever practice compassion, I wonder, yeah, or love? Just having magical power, position, is nothing. You see, that's why I tell you, don't care about magical power, yeah? Because if you have it, you're tempted to use. Sometimes for defending yourself, sometimes just to show off, sometimes because of angry at that person messing you up, and then you cannot stop it, you cannot control, you see? It's nothing, this magical power. They are mostly all on the astral level. The higher magical power, you don't need to use it. It just comes out from yourself, just like breathing, okay? There's no need to be conscious of even breathing. You see what I mean? You breathe all the time. Yeah. Your heart beats all the time. That's real magical power, it's like that. It helps whoever needs it, whenever necessary. It just comes out. Hmm? Just like the sun warming you up. It doesn't have to, to hula hop or change in himself into the moon or whatever. Okay. But I want to ask you a question. You do all this kind of suffering, sacrifice, for what reason? What do you want to be? You want to be like me, you know, like <laughs> Shaka God. You want to be a higher God. Uh, you know, chakra is a lower, Jingleng, Tanvung, maybe the second level God, you see, higher one. Mm. So the, the king say, no, no, sir, I never wish to be, to have any of heavenly or earthly merit from the result of my vow or my doing. I only wish to become uh, a Buddha. Yeah, an enlightened master. Because a Buddha, meaning an enlightened master, they have the power to save souls. Chakra doesn't have. You see, that's why he has to even come down to take refuge in an enlightened master, and even just a, a master to be. You see that? At least in the future, they're linked together already. Then this Bodhisattva will not forsake him yeah, wherever the chakra will be born in the future. Oh my God, to have such a disciple, I, I write off voluntarily. <laughs> so, 
you don't think that being a Buddha is such a glorious job that everyone come to him as a disciple, are good and kind and truly, you know, loving, respectful to him and believing in him. You see this? Hmm? This kind of disciple? And the story before I told you, that the five uh, uh, vampires drink the Buddha to be blood, so become the first disciples. Any of you here are my first disciple? <laughs> Don't tell me, because I, I don't want to remember why, you know? And so many other stories that many people, even the Buddha give them something, or flesh, or blood, or whatever, then they become disciples, even the foremost, most dis- first disciple. Ay, ay, ay. <laughs> what kind of universe? <laughs> it is a shadow, no doubt, huh? We don't have this kind of thing in the original, you know, world. So scary. Oh, God. Even just the one to save him, you have to give him blood, flesh, and kill yourself, whatever he wants first, and then he becomes your disciple. My God! You don't need to be my disciple. Please, don't be. <laughs> who, who needs this kind of disciple, huh? He's the one who needs a Buddha, not the Buddha needs him. And they have to go and torture him like that, so that he can become a disciple. What a stupid world. What a terrifying system. Hmm? It's not like the Buddha wants something from him or asks him to be his disciple or anything at all. No, he has nothing to do with him. It were a God even, a God who knows right from wrong. Got to know good from bad, go down, hurt an innocent being like that, in cold blooded heart, no consider how suffer, and the last minute still ask question, what do you want to be? Just like him, because he wanted to be God and all that. You see what I mean? Even Loga. That's why he practiced merit before, to, to forward all this merit to become a God. So he thought the Buddha is also like that. You see? Like the dog, you know, a real dog, if you want, if you go near his bone, he think you want the bone. Yeah, this is the problem. That's why somebody, sometimes some, some people think bad about the master, because they are bad like that. They think the master is like them. You see what I mean? Or the Buddha is like them. That's why. So, suffering so much already, last second, he already has no more power. energy and blood level. Still ask questions, interrogate like that. Do you understand the difference between collecting merit to be a god or maya instead of forwarding it to Buddhahood? Do you understand? But it has to start already from beginning with love, compassion, and kindness. You have to want it that already. You have to want to be liberate in order to at least to help yourself, you know, to liberate yourself and to liberate your other generation of relatives and friends. Understand? It has to be big like that first. It has to start big already. At least five, six generations. At least wanting liberation. Not want to have a thorn in heaven or to enjoy all these beautiful things, you know, astral food and astral beautiful girls, you know, because astral girls are very beautiful. You are not that beautiful <laughs> when you go up there. When you go up there, you, like me, both are ugly. <laughs> no, after we die, and we, if we have merit, we, even astral level, our body change, our appearance change. We become very beautiful and good looking. Yeah? Hmm. All of you male, huh? I warn you. If you pass by the astral level, you see beautiful woman, close your eyes and go fast. <laughs> because they're more beautiful than anything you saw on this planet. Even if you think your your wife is already Miss World, Miss Universe, no, nothing compared to that, okay? And the clothes that you bought for your wife, even though uh, designer clothes, nothing compared to heavenly raiment that they wear. So if you see the astral level being, just close your eyes and call the master, recite the five name, <laughs> and jump on the UFO, run. Some people go there, you know, and sink there. Of course, you have masters, it's different, it's better, but many people die, 
go there. And so beautiful. <laughs> you you lost in there. You don't want to go anywhere else. Yeah, it's like that. Hmm. So there's a difference between having a master and not. You see, master will protect you, and probably don't even let you see anything when you pass through this lower level. You know, kind of almost like blindfold you so that you will not be attached to that level and don't go any further. Understand me? Yeah. So sometimes if you see like blank blanket or something in the front, oh, thank you. Say thank you, Master. <laughs> <laughs> Show me only when I'm in higher level. Then it's good. Better okay? Yes. Okay. And then he asks again. Huh? <laughs> My God. After he said he only wants to become Buddha, but he doesn't ask for any pleasure or merit, position, a blessing from these three worlds, you know, like the Brahman world, you know, third world, second world, and astral world, and human world, etc., like that, yeah? So uh, the, 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 the chakra god, still not happy. Uh, you are saying that, but, you know, who, who, who knows? Who can believe it? Uh huh. I saw you. Your body is shaking terribly like that, uh, and your your energy is already almost to the end. You could almost cannot even even speak when you say you don't uh, want to gather all this merit of from heaven and earth. And I cannot believe you. How can you prove it? Okay. So the. The king, huh? Is that the king, right? Still the king. And he said, in front of you, I vow sincerely, if my heart is truly sincere just for the ultimate truth, please, all the Buddhas in the ten direction, heal my body now. And immediately, his body completely became whole, like before, even more bright, more beautiful. So the whole kingdom of heaven and earth and all the divas, they're very, very happy and in awe of his true, sincere heart. And have never seen such a thing, you know, before. That's what they say. Uh, they are awe and frightened as well as happy. You know, all this mixed emotion. Of course, they're frightened because such a terrifying scene in front of them. Yeah, all because of his iron will. Yeah, happy because you know it's true, and they can witness it. You know, rare phenomena, and that the Buddha has become whole, and better looking than before. Ah, this is the last one. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I peep in the back, and it's no more. It's a new one. Okay. Ah. And the Brahma said to the Buddha, Praised be your word, honor one. The king Titi in, in that time was you now. Yeah. You sacrificed so much, you've gone through so much suffering and pain for all beings, so that you'll be able to rescue them from the sea of suffering, sorrow, and birth and death. Because they are just like laying or uh, getting lost in the forest of, of sharp swords, sharp knives, or, or drowning in the sea you know, of, uh, of suffering. And they cannot even call for help. They don't know whom could help them. So nobody can help them, nobody can show them the way to get out. Uh, now that you have become Buddha, fulfill all your past lives wish. So now please be merciful, compassionate, and remember what you wanted to become Buddha. Please teach all beings, whoever has a chance and have affinity and ready to hear they will hear and be liberate. And then he he kneeled down again, and then he stood up again, and he kept pleading with the Buddha, and praising his 
innumerable lifetime of sacrifice and compassion and love. And he was very, very sincere in his request. So the Buddha finally promised to do so. He stay on earth to, to teach whoever he can. And then, first of all, he went to the country called Balanai, probably is Varanasi huh? in, in uh, Sanskrit. And he uh, preached the truth in the deer park. Yeah. And then the five first disciples is the Kiltrang Yu, five people. Yeah. And then from then on, the three jewels, Buddha, Shangha, and Dharma, appear on this planet. Yeah. Okay, it's done. We should really thank the past masters, monks and nuns and scholars who have taken time to record the Buddha's teaching after the masters and Nirvana. And also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health or under any difficult situation to translate this so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. Are you happy? Yes. Good. There are many more stories in Buddhist Sutra. I, I love to read stories because you can read one story, you finished, you know? You don't have to keep being addicted to the next one. Yeah. It's like story, it's simple, short, and it's go quickly into the heart of the listeners or the reader, yeah. Buddhist uh, Sutra has many stories, you know. Even if you don't believe that all oh, this is truth, it's okay for entertaining, yeah. Like, like children love to read stories, these are adult bedtime stories, yeah. <laughs> and then, even though for some people maybe they don't believe it's true or not, it doesn't matter. They're full of moral concepts full of love, you know, and kindness to remind us to be such worthy beings in the world, in the universe. If we are not worthy beings, then we are not worthy at all, anywhere. Hmm? Hmm. We were just like stones or pebble, have no way to improve, you know, no way to understand. Maybe the pebbles understands, <laughs> but he has no way to express. Or to improve. Yeah. All right, huh? I heard that uh, one time, long time ago, a legend has it that one monk preached and all the, all the stones nodded head. Yeah. I have it in my, in my group also. <laughs> Many stones also nodded head. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe the story <laughs> could be true. Yeah. Okay. So we better stop now, and if it's not too uncomfortable, then you continue to meditate like this. If not, then uh, you have to uh, dissipate a little bit to make more room to sit for a long time. Just all stand up and go spread out, hmm? or go in the room, yeah, or go in the meditation hall, and then meditate, okay? Yes. I appreciate your sincerity and love. May you all become Buddha quickly, quickly. <laughs> you already mini Buddha, right? <laughs> medium size, mini Buddha or medium size, you know? <laughs> we want to be XXL size. Yeah? <laughs> Thank you very much for being so attentive. Yeah. Thank you. Let us see you. Huh? Thank you. Let us see you. Thank you. Of course, I let you see me. Or what else? Okay. Yeah. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone wants 
someone tell me if you ever return if you ever return